Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse, and today I'm doing a booktube focused Q&A. This was supposed to be my 12 years on booktube anniversary video, but it's been a second since that happened. That was on March 10th, and I'm a little bit late to answering these questions. But honestly, it's kind of on brand for me being late, so it works. I feel like I'm known for being late to trends, being late to books, and now I'm late to my own booktube anniversary party. I went over on my community tab here on YouTube and asked you guys to ask questions surrounding booktube, and today I'm going to be spilling the tea, baby. I'm unleashing all the tea that's within me and just gonna splash you guys with the tea. It's, it's not gonna be very hot, so don't worry. It's like lukewarm. I've sort of filmed this video backwards. I've already answered all the questions. And ya boy was very chit chatty, so you might wanna go grab a snack or you might just wanna like put this on in the background because your boy just talk, 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 talk for far too long. But I had a lot to say apparently and I just let it out. Let's get into it. How did you first discover BookTube and what made you wanna start your own channel? I found out about it through another YouTuber that I was following at the time and that is Kaylee Hyde. She announced in a video that she was making a BookTube channel and I had no idea what booktube was. I almost thought it was like a completely different platform, but come to find out it's this fantastic community of people that talk about books on YouTube. At the time that she announced this, I was actually just getting back into reading and was getting really passionate about it. I also was just graduating high school and I had started taking classes at my community college and I just was feeling very lonely and had no friends. I also had always wanted to make YouTube videos. So when Kaylee announced that she was making a booktube channel, like the gears just started moving in my head and I was like, I could make YouTube videos about the books that I'm reading and make friends. The initial draw for me in making a booktube channel was to make friends and community. What videos over the years have made you the most proud? Can you tell us your favorite video you made each year? Gavin's out here challenging me, but I will go through each year and pick out a favorite video or maybe several videos. I don't know. This is gonna be hard though because like some of my older videos like early booktube days, oh they were cringy! Cringy cringy! I cannot look back at them. For year one 2012 I'm gonna have to say my booktube channel trailer is my favorite video. I had my friend Maureen help me film this channel trailer and I feel like it's pretty top tier for being my first video ever. Actually the bookstore that we filmed that video at no longer exists so RIP to that bookstore. I miss it so much. Year 2, 2013, I would say my Draw My Life video. I cannot watch that video back because like my voice just irritates me back then but I was super proud of myself for making that video because I feel like I was just super open and vulnerable and it's not easy to put yourself out there in that light on YouTube for all to see. So pat on the back to pass Jesse. Year three, 2014, I feel like this was booktube's prime. I would have to say my favorite video from this year was Book Pictionary. It's the collab I did with the OG Book Explosion crew. So Christine, Kat, Ariel, Elizabeth, and myself got together and filmed collabs. I feel like 2014 was one of the years where I just like started to feel so excited about making content. It was my era where I feel like I started shouting at the camera. I no longer do that thankfully. I feel like there was a time when I was like known for being like so loud and obnoxious. I'm more normal and calm now, which I much prefer. I can be a little bit, you know, weird and obnoxious still, but like I'm a little bit more tame and I love the era that I'm currently in. Year 4, 2015, hands down it's my video with Sarah J Mass. It's just iconic, okay? Honestly, the fact that she's like one of the biggest authors today is just like wild to think about. I always really loved doing author interviews because I feel like I did a good job of like coming up with interesting and unique questions to ask. Some of them might have been a little bit silly, but I think that that helps make the interview less boring, if you will. 2016, I feel like this is when I entered my skit era. One of my favorite sketches from that year was 25 Signs, You're a Book Addict. 2017, again, still in my skit sketch era. I really enjoyed the video, When a Book Does You Wrong. I remember just like really enjoying coming up with that concept and like thinking of things to include within that video. And then I would also say in 2017, I really enjoyed the video series where I tested weird book products. That was a series that I really wanted to continue to do, but there's only so many book products in the world and I wasn't able to like continue on the series for as long as I wanted to. 2018, I feel like this is the year that I really started to grow as a creator and I was like trying to like think outside the box. One of my favorite videos from that year though is when I put my face on book covers. I can't rewatch it because I can't rewatch a lot of my old videos. One day I feel like I'll be able to like go back and like watch my videos and be proud of myself but it's just like hard for me to go back and watch. 2019, literally my best era. I'm still so proud of all the videos that I made in 2019. I feel like I really pushed myself in in making content that year. Mind you, this also was the year that I had to go on medication for anxiety. So like, I think I did like push myself a little too hard, but I was so proud of all the content that I made that year. There were so many vlogs that I put together early 2019 that were like top tier. I'm still so proud of all the editing work that I put into those videos. Also, I put out the most dramatic trailer. <laughs> 
at the start of this year, like I think it was like January 1st and I dropped this trailer as like an intro into my next era and like it's so dramatic but I'm also so proud of that video. Like it was so good. It's a little cringy looking back on it because it is a little bit on the dramatic side of things but I remember I had a vision for 2019. I wanted to like step outside the box and try to make really unique content and I feel like I was able to live up to that. Which I'm just gonna name some more videos from that year that you should go and check out that I'm so proud of. The painting on my books video. The Michelle Obama video. Hello. I met Michelle Obama in 2019. You're joking. I'm not joking. Oh my god. The How Well Do I Know My Books challenge. My Bookstorm series which is basically like a bookish game show. My Japan vlog. Like oh my god. Top tier creation year. I honestly feel like I'm getting back to a 2019 year. I'm definitely like a different person than what I was in 2019 but like I feel like I'm getting back to like that passion. That excitement. Mind you I do not want to have the anxiety that I had in 2019 but I want to create content that feels kind of like out of the box unique. 2020 the pandemic year I would say my bookshelf reorganization video was one of my favorite videos to make but I also really liked the book gibberish challenge and when I was making that video I was like oh my god this video is gonna pop off and so many people are gonna do this challenge and then it was like crickets which is fine because not every video needs to pop off or be the next greatest trend. I enjoyed making that video and that was enough. 2021 this was like my worst era yet. I feel like this was like the start of a two-year burnout for me like it was so hard to make content. I kept pushing because I just felt like if I kept pushing and if I kept staying in the rhythm of video creation that I would get the bug to keep creating and like kind of just think outside the box. And I think that that's like the issue that I've had the past few years. I would say my burnout years were 2021 and 2022. I'm someone who is constantly pushing to make creative content. And those two years, I just could not think of unique ideas. Like I just struggled so bad. And to be fair, like during that time, I was going through like a mental health crisis and just like a lot of things were not working in my life and so I kind of had to like take a step back a bit and rethink how I was approaching YouTube and while those two years were not fun for me I think they were important and vital years for me like I needed to take a step back and just like rethink how I was approaching YouTube. And I'm in a much better place now with my life and with creating content. So that was long and drawn out. But in 2021, one of my favorite videos that I made was recreating book covers. I really enjoyed just the process of making that video. And then also my new bookshelves organization video. That was a really fun one to make. It took me way too long to get it accomplished, but I was very proud of the final product. 2022, again, I was still in my burnout, but I had some creative ideas. I really enjoyed making the bookish video game video that I did. I feel like that was just kind of like pairing two of my favorite things. Like I love video games. I love books. And so to be able to pair those two things in one video was so much fun. I also liked the heartbreak book game video and my 18 bookstores in two days video where I went to New York and went to as many bookstores as I could within two days. But again, 2022 was a very rough mental health year. So I look back on that content and it makes me sad because I know what I was going through during that time. It just reminds me of like situations that I was facing like outside of YouTube and all the tears that I shed, all the nights where I like just couldn't fall asleep because I was just like overthinking everything in my life. It was just a struggle, but we made it through, we survived, we're still standing. Literally, I'm standing. 2023, I feel like I was starting to finally like just feel like myself again and that was very exciting and I feel like I was also starting to show up more authentically on YouTube. I still was like having a hard time showing up genuinely rather than like a characterized version of me because I got into this like place in my mind where I was like people don't like you. They liked this kind of like upbeat characterized version of you if that makes any sense. It's not that I've not been authentic throughout my YouTube journey but I feel like I definitely was like upping my personality for the camera and like trying to be as funny as possible and just not being as genuine as I can be. Oh it just got so dark. But I realized that like I couldn't keep that up. I couldn't keep doing that because I would film videos and be so exhausted because I wasn't showing up as myself. I wasn't showing up authentically. I was showing up as this like characterized version of myself. And so throughout 2023, I feel like I was like battling myself almost. Like there are some videos where I like show up just completely myself. And then there are some videos when I would show up like more characterized. But the problem is, is that like on YouTube, it is hard to just like grow and evolve as a person. Like I feel like I was trying to stay as like the 2014, 2015 version of myself for so long. And when I would show up more authentically and more myself and just show my real personality on YouTube, a lot of people would comment things like, what's wrong? Are you okay? Why are you so sad? And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm not sad. This, this is who I am. So like that struggle was like really hard for me and I had to just kind of like fight through and now I feel like I'm showing up a lot more authentically which is good. I feel like I'm oversharing a bit and talking about all 
all this stuff. Gavin just asked for like my favorite video that I made each year and I'm just like giving background information for each year. <laughs> Some of my favorite videos from 2023, I feel like I really liked the reading books with clickbait titles. I feel like that video in particular, the reading experiment style is definitely like the direction that I want to go into. And then I also really enjoyed making the videos where I guessed your badly drawn book covers. I love any video where I can have you guys participate and just be a part of the creation process of it. So those videos were really fun for me to make. What's the most negative experiences you've had with another booktuber? Or different question, how do you tell the difference between a booktuber who wants to genuinely connect with you as opposed to another booktuber who just wants to use you slash all your years of booktube for clout? Oh, you want the tea and I don't blame you. I would want the tea too. <laughs> I'm obviously not gonna like come for anybody or reveal too much, but I will say that in general, I'm a very guarded person. So as it is, it's hard for me to let people in. I don't even have that many booktube friends these days. I just have a lot of acquaintances, which makes me sad. Like I want more booktube friends and I need to really work on that and like put myself out there and be like, Hey, you wanna be buds? It's just, it's just hard for me, okay? Anyway, that's not even answering your question. I have had a lot of bad experiences, to be honest. And what I will say is that I tend to just like steer clear of creators that are a little excited about themselves. I don't think it's bad to be proud of the things that you've made or proud of the things that you've built or how many views you're getting or all the subscribers that you have. But I think when you start to view yourself as a famous person, I just get the ick. It just rubs me the wrong way. Like at the end of the day, you're just talking about books online. You're not a celebrity. I feel like I'm not answering your question at all, but I'm just not the type of person to like come for anybody or reveal too much because it's just not what I'm about. Again, I'm not here to like drag anybody. I just want to like uplift books and talk about books, but I have had many bad experiences, but I try not to give too much energy to those things. I just kind of like try my best to leave them in the past. I definitely at one point in my life did give my energy to those negative things. I was very petty. I was very judgmental. And I will own up to that, but I'm in a very different stage, a different era in my life, and I'm glad to be in this era. I try to just engage with booktubers that I enjoy, and I mute all the ones that give me the big ol' ick. I will leave it at that. What's your perspective on the views you get on your channel currently? Does it bug you, or you don't mind it as much? Listen, it's been a hard thing for me to shelve and not allow it to bother me. I will be 100% honest with you, I'm better now at just being like, this is just how things are, your videos don't get as many views, you hit your peak, and it was fun while it lasted. But I do have those days where I put tons of effort into a video. I post it, it flops, and I wanna cry my eyes out. It really depends on the day though. Like there are days when I'm like, eh, it's whatever, let's keep going, keep making content. And then there are the days where I'm like, I suck, nobody likes me. If anything, I just find it a little embarrassing because I have a high subscriber count and my videos do not match up with that in the slightest, but I had to humble myself and remind myself that I'm not here to be a famous celebrity and get millions of views. I just wanna connect with other people and share my love of reading. And if that number of people is smaller than what it used to be, that's okay. I will say though, that I feel like it's also mostly my fault. Like I can't just like sit here and be like, oh, the algorithm hates me. It doesn't favor me anymore. Like I also feel like I'm not making the most creative videos. I'm working on it though. I'm in my creative era. I've got lots of ideas coming. And also I'm really bad when it comes to like the branding of a video. I'm terrible at coming up with video titles, and I'm even worse at thumbnails. So it's partly on me, it's partly my fault, but I'll own it. I own it! What's the story about book explosion ending? That was 10 of the 12 years, so it seems like a major part and we never really got a conclusion. If you're new here, Book Explosion was a book club that I ran with my friends Christine from Poem Bananas Books and Kat from Catitastic. It was a big part of my booktube journey and we have made tons of collaborative videos together over the years. I think group projects in general can be challenging and the fact that we kept one up for 10 years is Incredible, honestly, admirable. I will say, and this might not paint me in the best light, but I was the one that like initiated the conversation of us ending Book Explosion. I just feel like we had all hit a point where we had these goals outside of Book Explosion, which is obviously not bad. Like, of course, it's fine to like have your own goal outside of like a group project, but like these goals outside of the group were becoming like very time consuming and we weren't able to like meet as often and plan for Book Explosion in order to like keep it going in a healthy way that was like maintainable for all of us. I especially wanted to explore my own path and figure out what I wanted to do outside of Book Explosion after it just like being such a big part of my journey. I just felt like I relied on it and I wanted to explore my own path. And to be frank and to be honest with you guys, our reading taste started to clash. And so it was often hard to land on a book that we were all interested in reading. And more times than not, especially like in the last few years of Book Explosion, I'd just be like, I'll read the book even though I'm not interested in it. But that started to become difficult because I was devoting my time to a book that I was not interested in reading. Even though it was like once each month, I still would have much rather read something that I wanted to read. Mind you, there were times when I would read the book and I'd be like, okay, I really like 
liked this, I'm glad that I read it. Just in general, that aspect of it became hard for me. So there was no falling out, no drama. We had been doing it for so long and it just felt like the right time to end it. How have you seen book two change over the years? Do you think the changes have been for the better or the worse? I think there are both positive and negative changes. One of the negative changes though that I can think of off the top of my head is that book two doesn't really feel much like a community anymore, which makes me really sad. Obviously it's difficult because booktube itself has grown into such a bigger thing than I can even comprehend. And there are like sub-communities within the booktube pool. I miss events like the booktubeathon or the reading rush, even though I'm terrible at readathons and they were never like that fun for me because I feel like I failed them all the time. I still loved just like seeing the community come together and everybody reading books and interacting, commenting on each other's videos and just like encouraging each other through the readathon. Like I just miss big events like that. Overall though I feel like the positives outweigh the negatives and I do like the direction that booktube is going in. I like a lot of the content that is being made today. I feel like there's a lot of creators out there that are making like really inventive and unique content and I have a lot of respect for like this new generation of booktube that's come through. I'm curious about the equipment you use for filming. Also, do you have a content calendar to plan your videos? If so, how does it work? I have a lot of equipment, but I will give you a quick rundown. My main camera that I use is a Canon 80D. I've been using this for probably five years now, and I really love it. It is a very expensive camera, but it's lasted me a very long time, and I feel like it's going to continue to last me for a while. I use a Canon G7X Mark II and a Nikon Z30 for vlogging. I much prefer the Canon G7X Mark II. It's lasted me a very long time and it's just a very stable camera overall. For my microphone I use an H4n Pro. I don't necessarily recommend this microphone because I don't think it's like the best quality. I'm actually in the market for a new microphone so if anybody has recommendations hit me up please. For lighting I love and prefer using natural lighting but there are cases when natural lighting just doesn't work so I have to pull out my box lights and for that I use the Neewer. I don't know how to say this brand. N-E-E W-E-R. Anyway, Neewer 700 watt Octagon softbox. I do like them. They're just very intense. And in general, I'm really not the best when it comes to video lighting. Like I get it so wrong all the time. So many people will comment things like, your videos are way too bright. I have a hard time with the lighting. Like I don't understand how it all works. Like my brain, no brain when it comes to lighting. That's the situation. I apologize for the bright videos. If my videos are ever bright, just know that like, I probably recognize the fact in, oh, it just got so dark in here. Should I brighten it up? Let's brighten it up with my camera. I recognize the fact that sometimes some videos are too bright. I just, again, I have always had a hard time like understanding how to get the perfect lighting. I don't think I've ever gotten it right, to be honest. I also use my phone so much when it comes to like vlogging. I typically will use this for like montage footage and whatnot. It's just like very stable, which I want to be clear, you don't need fancy fancy equipment to make YouTube videos. I know of so many people that just use their phone to make content and their content is fantastic. Which I will say, if you're looking to start a channel of any sort, I wouldn't recommend like going out and buying a bunch of fancy equipment. Like just start with your phone, see if you even really enjoy making content or if it's not for you. And then also just like see what you're able to make with your phone and then go from there. When it comes to starting out, you should always just like work with what you have and then go from there. This is a rather long question, but it says, do you ever feel like you have to stick to your usual genre because of your channel? Like I know in your videos, you will say, this pushed me into a new genre, but have you ever really, really really enjoyed a genre that's so far from your usual zone, you would fear alienating your viewers. I guess on a similar note, do you tend to default in book buying slash reading to your core genres for the same reason? Feeling like you have to read the same genres slash styles for fear of alienating. I'm gonna be honest here, as much as I love y'all and I definitely keep you guys in mind when I'm creating content, I will never force myself to stay reading from a specific genre or category just to please other people. And like, this is coming from somebody who struggles with people pleasing. I am a people pleaser to a T. I do get this though, because if you start your channel with one clear focus and you build your audience because of one specific genre or one specific style of book, that if you do make some kind of big shift, you might lose those people that originally subscribed to you and originally followed you for that one thing. But I feel like when I started out my channel, it was always just about books. There was never like a specific niche under the books umbrella. It's just like, I will read whatever I want to read. This channel is just like a documentation of my reading life and my my tastes throughout the years. Also like knowing the type of person I am, I can't stick with one thing. Like I like to jump around between genres and age groups. I like reading middle grade. I like reading YA. I like reading adult. I like reading different genres, nonfiction. 
I almost said sci-fi. I'm not super into sci-fi yet, but I want to work on that. Fantasy, realistic fiction, graphic novels, manga. I like to read a bunch of different things. And if I was to devote myself to one genre just to like please my audience, I would full on enter a burnout stage and it would not be good. Which just has been a bit of a fear for me and could be why my channel is a bit at a standstill right now. Because I'm not really willing to niche down. Like I want to be able to read all the things. Much to think about. All that to say though, I guess it's a slight worry, but at the end of the day, I will always just like read whatever I want to read. I also feel like in general, a lot of people that watch my channel don't even have the same reading taste as me. I constantly get comments of you guys being like, we don't have similar reading tastes at all, but I still stick around. I don't know why y'all stick around, but I'm grateful for you. I'm very grateful for you. Please stay with me. <laughs> do you feel like your journey in booktube is a documentation of your life or do you separate it from your personal life? Also, what are some opportunities and experiences, good or bad, that you've had because of booktube? It's kind of a mixture of both. I'm not necessarily afraid to talk about the things that I'm going through, but I feel like when I talk about my life in general, I'm very vague, and that's just because I don't enjoy, like, oversharing. It opens up the door for people to judge you, obviously, but then also, like, make assumptions about your life, and I just don't really enjoy that aspect of it. And I've seen what that looks like, and I just don't really want that for myself. I feel like it's not helpful for me and my own mental health. I just am not strong enough of a human to deal with comments like that. If I was a more secure human being, maybe I would just, like, open the floodgates and just share every little detail of everything that I've gone through. But I am as insecure as they come, and I will always prioritize my own mental health, and I know what's good for me and what's not good for me. And I think, like, sharing too much details about my life would not benefit my mental health at all. But also in starting this channel, it was never about me and my life experiences. It's always been about my reading life. Like that's the only thing that I've wanted to share since the beginning. And that's what I will continue to do. As for experiences, I've had some crazy experiences because of booktube, but honestly, and I know this is going to sound so cheesy and some of y'all will just like roll your eyes, but like the best experience I've had because of booktube is just like meeting you guys and talking with you guys. Again, I know it's going to be super cheesy hearing this, but like it's the truth. Y'all are the best thing I've received out of this booktube experience. How do you overcome creative slumps? I view creative slumps differently than I would like a reading slump. Like with reading slumps, I'm like, oh, I'll just take a break from reading. I'll watch a little Netflix show, watch some movies, scroll through TikTok, and eventually the pull will come back to me. But with creative slumps, for some reason, I've always just like pushed through, which I don't know if most people would like recommend doing that or find that to be helpful. But my belief for my own life is to just keep pushing through, keep pushing through that creative slump wall that's before you. Even if it means during that time you're making content that you've made before or you're making crappy content, you're still staying in that rhythm and maintaining that feeling of creating. Whereas if you lose balance with it, it might be harder to come back to if you take a break. I mentioned earlier how I was having mental health issues and also just was like hitting a big creative slump in the years of 2021 and 2022. And of course those years were frustrating for me, but I also feel like I learned so much about myself and my creative process through those years of creating despite being in a creative slump and despite them being really hard years for me. You can't always be thinking up these grand and new inventive things, but sometimes in making things that suck, you might get a spark for a brand new idea. Another thing that I learned is that in general, when I get into a creative slump, part of it is that I am just going through a moment in time when I lack confidence. And this is something that I deal with constantly when it comes to creating content. I lack confidence when it comes to my appearance. I lack confidence when it comes to the things that I'm saying. Like I will watch back videos and I will just be like, you're the stupidest person ever. And it's like, I'm not, I'm just like overly critical of myself and I need to learn to be kinder to myself, which is something that I am constantly trying to do. And it's a rough battle trying to be kinder to myself, but I'm working on it. But I feel like often more times than not, when I do get into that like state of mind where I'm like, oh no, I'm in a creative slump, it is, mostly due to a lack of confidence. What do you hope for the future of your channel? Do you want to keep doing it as long as possible or do you have some other career goals you would like to accomplish? I'm still finding my footing again after being so unsure if I wanted to keep doing this because again, after those two years where I was having like a mental breakdown, creative slumps, I was like, do I want to keep doing this? Like, do I want to keep putting my energy into this? And like, yes, I have found my passion for this again and I'm very excited about YouTube and I want to keep doing this as long as possible. I definitely know the direction that I want to move into. I want to 
move into a much more vlog style format and I want to lean into the reading experiment style. I'll still have like chit chat sit down style content like this up on my channel but I want to move into more like vloggy concept style videos. I also really want to do book deep dive videos. I've got a few of those planned. I don't know how I'm going to do in terms of like execution of that so I might try it and be like yeah I hate this peace out but I want to try them and just see how I feel about them. So maybe some like commentary style videos. I don't really have like a set goal for my channel and maybe I should like sit down and like find a vision for like what I want to do but at the end of the day I've realized that for me the best thing that I can do is just create things that I love and create things that give me happiness and also just focus on myself not on other people because I did there for a while fall into this like comparison game where I would see other creators and just like compare myself to them and like that's never a good idea like don't do that comparison is the thief of joy how have you maintained your channel during a reading slump this is a really good question because it can be challenging to like maintain a reading channel a booktube channel when you are in a full-on reading slump I will say that like there's content that you can do that does not require reading so if I were to ever fall into a reading slump I used to like rely on things like book tags book challenges bookish sketches meanwhile behind the scenes I'm like scrambling to get back into my reading era mind you all of the content that I mentioned is not very popularized these days like I feel like book tags are dead book challenges are dead I would love to see like a refresh on book challenges and book tags I say after being like I want to move much more into a vlog style format but like I would love to see book tags and book challenges come back around make a big comeback that's basically how I used to manage the channel when I would fall into a reading slump I would just rely on content that did not require reading. What advice do you have for someone who is considering starting their own booktube channel? I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the best at giving advice and I also don't know if my advice would work for the current state of booktube and like where booktube is currently at. But I'll say two things. One, do not be so concerned with the equipment that you're using to create content. You can easily start out just using your phone. I also wanna be clear that you don't have to buy a bunch of books in order to fit in with booktube. There is space for you. You do not have to have large book collections behind you in order to make content. I also feel like it can be really helpful to go back to the first videos of booktubers that you follow and just like watch their journey and see how they start out and realize that like everybody has their own journey on booktube and youtube in general and that like the stuff that they used to make is gonna be so vastly different from what they're making now. And just like recognizing the fact that like you can evolve over time, you can grow, you can become better at making content and it's okay to make crappy stuff at the start, okay? You're gonna make crappy videos, they're not gonna be good, but you will grow and you will become better. The more that you do it, the better you get. Have you considered creating different content that you are passionate about apart from books? Yes, I have a gaming channel that I wanna bring back that I started last year. I have some videos up on there now of me playing Disney Dream My Pally, which I don't even play Disney Dream My Valley anymore. I would really like to bring back that channel this year at some point. And then I have a manga channel on the horizon. TBD on when that will be launched. <laughs> Those are all the questions that I'm answering today. Even though this video is like so long, I feel like there was still so much I could say. Like a part of me just wanted to keep going, but like I cut myself off several times. But if you have any more questions for me that I didn't answer throughout this video that you're curious about, go ahead and drop them for me down below in the comments. And I will either get back to you in a reply or maybe I will do another Q&A in the near future. Before I close out the video, I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has stuck with me throughout the years. I really appreciate you and you guys mean so much to me. And there goes the lighting. The lighting is really saying, get out of here, Jesse. But I really appreciate everybody who has stuck with me throughout the years and who have enjoyed and engaged with my videos. I appreciate you so much and thank you for allowing me to keep doing this. I'm gonna listen to the darkness now and I'm gonna do my outro. <laughs> if you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you wanna see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye y'all.